I'm ready to start removing the hardware and the tools I'll be using will be a screwdriver, needle nose pliers. So I'm going to gouge the wood out, dig the wood out, and I have to pull the curled up end of the split rivet up. It took me about eight minutes to take this piece of the hardware that I'm doing out now and I'll fill the holes up later with putty. On the back, you can see um, the split rivet holding the hinge in. And I'll use a screwdriver and lightly, lightly pry the split rivet out. And when I get them out, you'll have a hole like this, which will need to be filled. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the um, latch on the front, kind of gouge out the wood, pry up the um, edges of the split rivets. Some of the split rivets were in really good, some were not. Now I'm pulling the split rivets out from the front, trying to do it without um, bending the latch up. Next we'll work on the handle. When you look from the bottom, there are prongs that face outward. Those have to be straightened up and I I pull them up with the screwdriver and then I'll straighten them up with my needle nose pliers. So once you get them straightened up, you're going to have to tap on them with a hammer to tap them out. Just tap gently. Then I take a screwdriver from the top and try to gently pull them up. I loosen up the little leaves that are no longer any good and pull that hardware out. Now from the back, I'm kind of gently tapping the prongs out. Just work gently, trying not to uh, mess up your hardware too bad. So we'll clean that up and use that. Once, once you get your hardware out, go ahead and strip the Tolex on the top and gently send that sand that down. Okay, all our hardware is off. I've got all the hardware in the tray, we'll clean that up later. The only thing that I haven't taken off is the black little bumper board for your machine to sit up against and the little oil thing. So I will take that off and take close up pictures of that. What I'm planning to do now is I'm taking plastic wood or a wood putty and I'm gonna use my, I think it's a one inch putty knife and I'm gonna fill those let those dry so that um, I can sand those down when I sand the whole case. And the corners are coming apart, so I'm gonna re-glue and clamp that. These are the corner posts that I'll sand and recover with fabric also. So all these holes I'll be filling, the four holes where our hardware was at, my top, is all clean and sand it all. Okay, so I've got my wood putty and I got a little bit of putty on my one inch putty knife and I'm just going to fill these holes in. And I'm trying to push to make sure it's filled full. And the smoother you get it, the easier to be a sand later. So I'm going to fill those along this edge. There's quite a few chips just in the grain of the wood. So when my fabric goes over, I want it to be smooth and I'd have to um, sand it out quite a bit and ruin the curve if I just sanded those out. So I'm just going to use my finger and put a little putty in those blemishes. Let me check my other edges. There's some on this side. And if you use this wood putty, it does not stain too well. So if you were gonna stain your case, I definitely would use wood putty afterwards that matched your stain. 
or wood filler like they um, use at the furniture stores. So I put wood putty in one hole and it's coming out this side. So I'm gonna smooth that down. So that means I've got it pretty full there. I may have to put another coat on. I'll see when I sand it, but that's how I put my wood putty in.